Hey Jumpstart friends! Miss Jade here and I hope that you all had a wonderful week. Today we're going to be doing something that I like to call draw along where I'll be drawing and you all will be able to follow along. Specifically what I'm going to be drawing today are different weather scenes similar to those in the book we read this week, Rabbits and Raindrops. Let's get started. So what you're going to need for this activity is a ruler or a straight edge, really anything that you can trace along. You might need to get a grown up to help you find this though, but that's okay. Um, you can use any kinds of markers or colored pencils, but make sure you have blue, green, and yellow, because those are going to be the most important colors for us today. But really, any kind of marker, colored pencil, glitter, anything you want. And I also really like to use a pencil to start off and then a black pen to end with. But really, you can do what you want. This is just a suggestion. All right, so here I've got my pencil and I've got my ruler and I'm just going to draw some lines just like this. Um, in order to split the page up for different pictures so that we don't use too much paper in this activity. So now for the actual drawing. When I draw something, I usually like to start in pencil. That way, if I make a little mistake, I can erase it quickly before I add pen or colored pencils. So it's a little hard to see um, what I'm doing with my pencil, so I'm just going to skip through this part really quickly and we'll get to the part where I use pen and it's much easier to draw along. Okay, so now I'm going to start tracing what I already drew, but hopefully it'll be easier to see. So here I'm kind of drawing the hill in the background, and as you can see, I'm not drawing a completely straight line. I like to keep it a little more uneven so that it looks like an actual hill. So now I'm drawing the tree, and those are my little branches. That's the trunk. Um, and then I'm drawing the leaves. Again, kind of like a big, a big uneven circle with kind of rough edges. Make it look like actual leaves. And then I'm drawing some more kind of hills in the background. Again, keeping it kind of uneven um, and making it look as natural as possible. Just kind of going slowly, take your time with this, there's never any rush with drawing. Um, and then, so the next thing is to draw another tree, this time bigger. And one tip I have for you guys in drawing trees is if you draw the letter Y to begin with, and then you keep adding different branches, and then you add all the leaves, and it looks like a perfectly good tree. That was a tip that I learned maybe when I was in elementary school and I still use it. So yeah, there's me drawing, um, drawing the leaves just really carefully again, taking my time. And then I'm drawing a little path. Just this time you can use a completely straight line. Um, because there's no, there's no nature really. And then I'm drawing the sun behind the tree. And for the clouds, another tip I have is to draw kind of like an oval shape um, at the bottom and then do the little squiggles at the top like I did there, just to make it look a little bit more natural because clouds are usually flat at the bottom. And then those are some little birds. So I'm just going to go through this part really quickly. Basically, I'm just coloring in different parts of my drawing. Um, so as you can see, I've got the light green going um, in most of the picture, and then some dark green, and then um, just going to use some brown for the tree trunks. 
um, you can really use any colors you want. I mean, there's no, there's no real limit to what you can do with your creativity here, but um, these are just the colors I like to use and that are more, most similar to what you would see in real life. So, yeah. So this is our first scene. And we can see that the sun is out. There's only a couple clouds in the sky. The sky's a perfect blue. And there's a bunch of birds out as well. Seems like a perfect day for playing outside with your friends. Can you think of anything else that you would like to do in this kind of weather? I'll think about it too. I think that if I were to enjoy a day like this, I would get my book and I would go and sit under that tree and read for hours. All right, let's move on to our next scene. So again, I'm just doing my pencil outlines so that I don't make any mistakes before I start the real thing. Um, yeah, so just going through this part really quickly again. So here you want to start off by drawing two straight lines on either side of the page, just like I'm doing here. And that's to represent the fact that you're seeing this windy night from a bedroom window. And so that's me drawing curtains there. Uh, kind of like a slight triangle-ish shape. Um, and then that's me drawing the moon. Um, a pro tip is if you draw somewhat of a semicircle first and then join the two edges together, that can make a really good half moon. And then so those, those lines that I just drew there are to represent the fact that it's really windy, kind of like the air is moving. And then with the tree, um, you can still do that same Y trick that I was telling you all about before, but this time kind of make it lean on its side. So here is me coloring again, just going through it really quickly. Um, I'm using a dark blue and purple for the sky to show that it's nighttime, but you know, you can use any dark color you want, and for that matter, any any color in your picture, it, it doesn't really matter, um, just as long as you're having fun with it. Uh, but yeah, I'm staying pretty true to what trees and dark skies look like in real life. And that's just me coloring in the curtains and yeah. So this is our second picture, and as you can see from what we've drawn, it's a really windy night. Look at this tree, it's about to fall over and some leaves are even coming off. What would you like to do on a night like this? I know that I would want to stay inside and maybe watch a movie with my family. Okay, that's it for this scene, and now let's work on our last one. So here's me doing my pencil outline for the last time. Again, I think that it's a really great way to start off any drawing. Even some of the most famous and talented artists in the world start off their paintings with a pencil outline. So I'm starting off by drawing the clouds um, using a similar trick that I told you all about before with the flat bottom and squiggly top. And then for the rain, um, you can kind of just make little quick dashes with your pen um, kind of pointing to the side. and it really makes it look like rain. Um, if you even take a look at 
some of the books you may be reading for class where there's rain in it. Rain looks like how I'm drawing it there. Um, and so there I'm just drawing some jagged lines to represent or show, make it look like grass. Um, and I mean, again, you can you can draw this any way you want. I'm basically just trying to get in some clouds um, and some rain and some little houses and some puddles just to show that it is raining in this picture that I'm drawing. But there you see again I'm doing the um, the dashes and drawing the squiggly lines on top of the cloud. Uh, just very, very simple. So for the houses, um, one thing I like to do when I'm drawing houses is kind of draw half of a diamond for the roof, see as I've done there, and then two straight lines down from that, and then I like to fill it in with usually three windows and a door kind of in that in that sort of setup there. Again, draw houses any way you would like, but that is one trick that I learned maybe when I was a little bit older than you all and I used for years when I was drawing all the time. So again, with the tree, you can use the same Y technique that I was talking about before and kind of just draw squiggly lines around that Y shape to make the leaves look more natural. Um, and then just outline the curved path, similar to how in the, in the first picture, the lines that I drew weren't completely straight. Um, and then I'm just repeating that here. And yeah, all done for the outline. Here I'm using red and blue for the houses, but really use any colors you'd like. However, I will say that a really important part of making a rainy day picture is making those clouds gray because as you may have noticed before clouds turn gray when it's about to rain and sometimes you can tell that it's about to rain when you see that the clouds are gray even when there's no raindrops so that's really it for the coloring part of this video i hope you all enjoyed it and i wish i could see your pictures so this is our last picture, and as you can see, it's completely different from our first picture. It's a really rainy day, the clouds are gray, the sky is gray, there's rain everywhere, there's puddles. Honestly, not a kind of day where I'd like to be outside. What would you like to do during this kind of day? I think that maybe I would do some baking with my friends or family and listen to the sound of the rain, because I really like the sound of rain. Um, but that's it for today. Thank you all for joining me, and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye! See you next time!